the Corsair Pro Series drivers head to Sweet Home, Alabama for what is always one of the most wildest events on the calendar. It's Talladega. Starting on the pole for today's event is the 36 of Mathis Wells. Starting beside him is Jose Mills. Third is Simon Oskin. Fourth is Code Red. Running at the top five is Al Legacy in the 38. The rest of the qualifying order on the left side of the screen. At this racetrack, we look at the big one as an inevitability. It's not a matter of if it will come, it's when, as the pace car already goes in, getting set for 29 laps around this 2.66 mile oval as we approach the delayed start-finish line. Here we go. Green flag is out. We're racing at Talladega. The 96 already moved up high. That move is not going to work though as you'll fall back as we've already got four wide back in the pack. That's the 27 and 36 battle it out. The 38 is approaching. In fact, he'll get help from the one of Justin Zidell to try and go for the lead in turn three. And out of four, Legacy is going to keep the lead. Zydell right on his back bumper, but he'll get relegated to the outside. The 13 coming as well. And it will be Al Legacy leading lap number one at Talladega. Four wide all around. Is that 20 car getting a little bit close? That six just nearly wrecked there. As they're going around in the back, got a couple of cars around. That's the 42 called Luigi, the 2 Johnny Gardner. But are they done wrecking? You see four wide all around. 39 and 48 close. And unbelievably, it doesn't look like they're going to wreck again. They say single file for the front four. And that's going to allow Al Agassi in the 38 to lead them back to the line and the caution. So already a wreck on lap two. Luckily, it is a smaller one. And Yepa's got another one, so we'll have to see, but it looks like Yepa's hooked the two car of Johnny Gardner. As uh, Yepa's hooked the 18, I believe it was, at Homestead. Just look at that right there. They're getting super close. In the end, it's the two going around, the 42 as well, the thir 31, yeah, get some damage. But from the looks of it, they won't be too damaged. They might be slow. But I don't think they're going to be like 30 miles an hour off the pace. So you see once again, the 83 trying to force the issue. That's going to get the 2 and 42, 31 all wrecked. They did wreck again. Joe Jefferson was in it. So what happened here? After the line. Let's see. As they all get slowed down. Oh, the 88 got turned. And around goes a lot of people. But luckily, I don't think they're going to be too damn... Oh... Okay, so that's what's happening with them. They're getting stuck on the apron. So I don't have any reason to believe that they would be out under regular circumstances. 
But since they got stuck on the apron, that will hurt their chances at the win. As you see the 17 go around as well back there. Looks like the 26 was going to save himself from it, but to no avail. So we had a three car wreck in the back and a multi car wreck up front. That takes out both Jeffersons. Friesen, the 88, the 55. From possible contention, unless we really have the biggest crap show of a lifetime. We don't know yet, we're only lot three laps in. The only car retired so far is the two. I'll take you guys to the restart. There's the one to go. It's Al Lagasse, Keegan Thompson, Gary Barlow, Kyle Hunter, and Zachary Delello. Your top five coming to the green flag as the pace car in. Here they come. Back green at Talladega. The 39 and 2 are the ones out from that. The 55, 47, 26 are all laps down. And it'd be safe to assume most of these guys involved in the wreck will be off the pay of CS. But it doesn't look like they're out of it. Some people like Luigi, who went around in that first accident, on Jack Fink. They'll still be in it. Or maybe not. Luigi's starting to lose the draft. As Legacy stays up front. But now here comes the 13 of Keegan Thompson to the bottom. Now look at that move. By the 18 and 32, that was almost choreographed right there. And look at that, the 18 going for the lead after a violent flip of Homestead. He's going to go three wide to the bottom and try and take it away from Thompson. But now he's got the 43 right there on his back bumper. 43 going to go to the inside. 56 there following as they scatter down the back stretch. The 56 going to go with the 43, 32 with the 18, 38 with the 13. That's, oh, the 13 nearly went around there. 56 down low. And who will it be for to lead that lap? I believe that was the 56 that time by a hundredth. As they start to get packed up again here at Talladega and you start to worry about if the big one's going to happen again. Or wide back there. The six was going to pull down low, but Smith already did it. And here comes Code Red. He won the Daytona 500. He knows how to get it done on these plate tracks. It's the 18... Nearly hooked the 43 again. The 93 with help from the 98. Cobra's won here before on the Pro Series. As he's going to help Co Red in the 93 to the lead. And the 13 nearly got hooked again. Vargas, McDowell, Fink, Oskin, others back there. They're trying to hang on to the draft. I believe they've got damage, but if they they wreck again, which it looks like they're going to do, they'll be back up front. And the 27 goes down there to the outside, or the inside for the lead. And we the 51 trying to go four wide, but that's for second now. 
but now it might be for the lead is the the 51 in the middle oh there they go again the front row racing cars up into the middle of the pack the 29 around as well and someone just got pounded back there can't tell who it was think upside down gets back up on all fours as we've got a mul another multi-car accident on the back stretch this time and who leads them back it'll be the 32 of Delello leading them to the line Oskin might have been involved again so as the front row racing cars the first ones to go around was it Legacy though? No, it was, it was right. You know what? There. Okay. So right, just a little bit lower than Legacy is. Gets Legacy hooked around, but Legacy saves it. Right comes back up the track. Takes out the 29. I believe that's the 55 in there again. 17 in the wall. 34 is the one who went airborne in the back, but Fink is going to be in trouble here. He gets hit by the 9. Flipped upside down, but only does like a half flip. And then another half flip. And he gets back up on all fours. He never fully rolled over. He just flipped on one side, came back over on the same side. Let's see if we can get a better angle. Yep, this is back here. Let's see. Let's see, Rick up front. Vargas was the one who nailed the 34. There's the 14 flipping. The 14 was upside down last race at Talladega, except it was Fitzwater. And I believe Fitzwater had a part in flipping the, the 14 over, so that was his previous ride, flipping over like he did last race at Talladega. Hopefully it wasn't the 9 of Rodney Crouch that time at Talladega to flip the 14 over. Yeah, that'd just be weird. So let's see who's out from that. So the new people out, I believe Orman wasn't out before. I don't think Wallace was. Fitzwater, Fink, Vargas, McDowell, Onjack, Wright, Shepard, who has not had a good season so far. They're all out of it. So it'll be the 55 starting on the inside again. We'll have less than 28 cars to decide it. Green flag back out. Lap 16 is underway, and you've got to think about fuel mileage. This was one of the only races in Season 3 that fuel mileage came into play. So you would think that it might have a role in this race, but we'll have to see. As the 36 goes to the inside of the 32, the 78 down low, he's going to go with the 43 as someone's holding up the pack back there. The 55, as Roger Ray holds up the 51 of Christian Russell back there. Now he finally gets down low, but it's a four car breakaway at the front of the pack. They're definitely not going to be able to maintain it. Here comes the rest of the field. Here comes Patrick Smith 
In fact, to the outside, this is for the lead. As they go three wide, it'll be the low to help the 78 down low. This is just Ford and Chevy up front. Maybe we've got a Evan Hunter in the back. As the Lolo pulls down low. He's got Mills with him. As he actually is going to pull right up high. Maybe to give Mills the lead. But now Mills is going to get shuffled up high. Here comes the one. Mills blocks. That's an aggressive block by him. As they come around. Oh! They're going around again. The 43 airborne. That was Barlow. And they save it. Thompson also was involved. And we've got another yellow. And once again, I don't know how that didn't wreck more cars. But we got the 7 and 27 tanning away from the field. That's Abby Jacobs in the 7, as well as Mills, as they try and pull away. But Mills is... Jacobs is going to go down low on Mills. As they go side by side to the line, it will be Mills. So Barlow got spun. Right there. I want to say that's red. Yeah, it is code red. So they're going four wide, entering the trioval, but into the trioval. The 93 pulls down low, and that's going to hook him right into the 11. And he didn't get too airborne, but. It was definitely a close call for sure, and that would have been a weird flip if it did happen. In fact, the 11 actually came closer to flipping over than the 43. The 13, around. But, really no major damage to these cars. As we've got, what is that, our second, third yell of the day? I wonder if these guys are actually going to pit the 11. I believe that's for, for repairs. So it's Mills out front. I don't believe these guys pit. We'll have to see. Because, like I said, this is the only race last season. It, it wasn't even the spring, or the uh, the first race here. It was the second race. Where they had fuel issues. Where many, many people had to come in, get a gas and go, and then come on out. Don't know if that'll be the case this time. But it's possible, so there is that worry if uh, anyone is good on fuel. As the lights are out, that's the one to go. Mills, Jacobs, Smith, Snare, and Delolo, your top five. As they come to the green flag. I don't think anyone was out from that. As it's a single file parade on the bottom so far, with only a few drivers left in the dust on the outside. It's mainly everyone abandoned down low to try and get the draft. We'll see if things shake up down on the back stretch. Jacobs trying to pull down low. Trying to get the lead from Mills. 
They're going to work together this time. There goes the 32. Trying to go for second. As Jose Mills leads another one. We've just got six to go at Talladega. Mills, the one of the more dominant cars today. Can he stay out front or will he be beaten by anyone in the back? Thirty two trying to catch a run. Let's see what he can do with it. Nothing yet. As Mills has a very commanding lead over the field right now. Five to go. As these two pulling away, everyone in the back fading. Here goes DeLello. It'd be one of the more upsetting wins if he were to get the victory to here today. As he's he's wrecked a lot of time this season. It it all started at the clash. And he's wrecked a whole lot more in this season than I, don't, I believe anyone else has. So it'd be amazing if he could get this W right here. He's in a good position to do it, but... Mills really commanding the field right now. Four to go. Zidell pulls down low. But he's got Jacobs behind. One known to work with Mills. As he's going to get forced up to the middle. But so is Jacobs. Snare is going to go to the bottom. Smith pushing Riley Snare. But now Smith goes to the inside. As we've got just three laps to go. The pack forming up again. Oh, they're wrecking again. This is Mills' race to lose. As they wreck in the back. Syrah around. And that's the yellow. And this is Mills' race to lose once again. He's got a big gap over the field. And off of turn number four, Mills, no contest there, is going to be able to win Talladega by seconds over the rest of the field. By how much? Second, point forty-two. So that's our... Fourth yellow today. Would have been interesting to see if these guys could have caught Mills. If it would have gone green. And that's Jacobs spinning the 56. Okay, let's see here. She goes to the bottom. Smith and Snare Slam. The 7 is going to go around from that, as well as the 36. 93 gets some damage. And how'd the 10 go around? I was trying to avoid, trying to check up for the one. Got spun by Cobra. Uh, 
and then gets clobbered by 36. So it's Mills winning today. He can just coast it around. And Smith a disappointing second. As he comes up just short. As they'll all have the fuel to make it. So Jose Mills a dominating win here at Talladega. As what strayed from the norm. He was able to control the pack really well. And in the end, he gets a deserved win. The checkered flag is out for Jose Mills, your winner at Talladega. Patrick Smith, Patrick Smith got second, Christian Russell third, Riley Snare fourth, Zachary Dolello fifth, Al Agassi sixth, seventh, Anton Shawbois eighth, Justin Zydell ninth, Derek Hamill and tenth, Jarakowski. Rest of the rest of the finishing results, we had twenty six cars on the lead lap. Roger Ray was the only car. To be a lap down, everyone else below him was out. So that's Talladega. Jose Mills basically really deserved that win. He was able to command the pack at the end. Stared out front when it mattered the most, when the caution came out, because they couldn't stop wrecking it. Just just small amounts of cars. They they didn't wreck big time once. In fact, the closest they got to the big one was the one where they wrecked under caution. But I guess that's not too bad in the grand scheme of things. But we still had a small pack at the end. So those were the contributing factors, but overall, 27 got a really good car today, as he is your winner at the second super speedway race on the schedule. Let's go to victory lane. Thank you for watching the Corsair Pro Series. We'll see you next time.